Hello everyone, and today we're going to be talking about taking up the assignment of Jesus. The last time we were together, we were talking about discipline and how important discipline is for you to discover your purpose, um, discover who you are in Christ, and how it really ties you to your purpose. We have to be disciplined. Undisciplined people cannot be used by God. But let's talk about taking up the assignment of Christ and how that links you to your God-given purpose and your assignment here on earth. We must take up Christ's assignment because, see, the whole objective is to become more like Christ. But the moment we reject the assignment, the moment we reject the commandments of God, we remove ourselves further away from the purpose that God placed us here on this earth to fulfill. So it's very, very important that we take up the assignment. Do not reject it and do not neglect it because your provision, all the things that you've been desiring, um, the blessing, all those things are tied, your purpose, all those things are tied to the assignment. You see, God is going to judge you based off of what you don't do, not what you do. Let me say that again. You're going to be judged based off of what you don't do and not what you do. See, as believers, we spend a lot of time focusing on being a good Christian and doing all the good things that we're supposed that we think that we're supposed to do as Christians instead of focusing on what is my assignment? What is God calling me to do? Where am I supposed to be? Am I walking in full obedience to God for my life? Instead of just trying to be busy, we need to learn how to be more accurate in how we live so that we can be pleasing to God. See, each of us have a calling. We all have a destiny. We all have been assigned to be at a certain place at a certain time and to be doing a certain thing. And it's our responsibilities as believers to renew our minds to the things of God so that we can discover that plan and that will and that destination. But we get so wrapped up in trying to be good Christians and acting like good Christians that we forget about the assignment. It's more important to be obedient than trying to be perfect or flawless as a believer. Okay, because at the end of it all, when we stand before God, God's going to ask you, what did you do with the talent that I gave you? Hmm? What, what did you do with the gift that I gave you? Did you go out and increase or did you just bury it? You need to ask yourself that question. Okay, because there will be a lot of people standing before God um, on Judgment Day saying, God, I did this in your name. I did this in your name. I did this in your name. But God is going to say, I know you not. Because see, God identifies you by your assignment. God identifies you by the assignment that he called you to. But let's talk about someone in the word. And you can find in the Bible that rejected God, rejected the assignment, and he missed the kingdom of God. Let's look at Mark 10, starting at verse 17 um, through verse 30. And this is the parable of the young rich ruler. Let's look at it real quick. Again, this is Mark 10, verses 17 through 30. Verse 17. And when he, talking about Jesus, was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered, talking about the young rich ruler. He answered and said to him, Master, all these things I have observed from my youth. And Jesus beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell what sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and take up the cross and follow me. And Jesus was asking something big of him. He was asking him to lay aside all the things that you you know to do. 
that you've been doing since you was a youth. You know, you, you've been a good boy. You've been a good Christian. You did all these things and you've made those things your righteousness. But Jesus was trying to reveal to him the kingdom of God by saying, lay down your way and take up my way. Take up the assignment. Take up my assignment and I will lead you to the kingdom. Unfortunately, this young man, he went away sad. Verse 22. He was sad at that saying and he went away grieved. For he had great possessions. Those possessions had him. He had great possessions. I know of a lot of people who take a lot of pride in how they serve in the church, how they do things, take a lot of pride. You know, I do this, I do that, I do this, I do that. But the moment Jesus requires of them that one thing that they hold so dear to them, how they will reject the assignment. They will reject the call of God. Because they hold too tightly to their possessions. They hold too tightly to their pride. Now we're going to skim on down. And we're going to read. Let's go to verse 29. And Jesus answered and said. Verily I say unto you. There is no man that hath left house. Or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife. Or children or lands. For my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. So what Jesus was saying, Jesus has never required anything of us that you will not receive a hundredfold return in this life. Talking about the life we live in right now here on this earth, we can have houses and lands and family and, and great possessions and in the life to come talking about eternal life. So God is not asking you for something so great that you're not going to get a return on that. A lot of us are trying to figure out why I'm not succeeding in life. Why I haven't discovered my purpose. Why am I still failing? Why I'm not progressing in life. You're holding on to something that you need to surrender and take up the assignment of Christ so that he can fill you with the kingdom of God. Because God is not going to require those things of you and then not return to you a hundredfold. And not just return to you a hundredfold, but those things are going to come with blessing. They're going to come without toil and struggle. They're going to be blessed by God. See, we want continuous blessings in our life. We don't want to be held up. You know, we a lot of us are very smart, intelligent, and we've worked really hard to get where we are in life. You may drive a nice car, live in a nice home, nice neighborhood. You know, you might make six figures and all those things, you know, and you think those things are, are a big accomplishment, but not if they come first, not if they come at the risk of you missing the kingdom of God because you're not willing to offer them, to sell them in order to inherit the kingdom of God. I hope this lesson has been eye-opening to you. If it has, let me know in the comments because, man, it is time for us to live in a God-given purpose. It is time for us to let go and let God fill us with the kingdom of God. It is well worth it. Let me know in the comments, and I look forward to talking to you again real soon.